If you really want to take your tennis game to the next level, then there's one thing you got to have. You got to have a forehand and you got to be able to own that forehand at will. And what that means is you need to be able to hit the right shot using your forehand at the right time. And the only way you can do this is through doing one thing, and this is repetition. The more repetition you have hitting the right shots on your forehand side, the better you're going to be in a match because repetition is the mother of skill. If you don't own your forehand, meaning you can't hit that shot when you want it, when you need it, then you don't own that shot. And if you don't own that shot, it's because one of two things, either technically you don't have the right technique to consistently hit the shot, or you haven't done enough reps, meaning that you know what you're supposed to do, but you can't do what you're supposed to do without thinking about it. And this is the biggest distinction I think separates so many players. There's a lot of great smart tennis players. They watch a lot of videos. They know the strategies, but when they step on the court, they know what to do, but when put in a pressure situation, it just crumbles. If you struggle because you play good in your practice matches, but you're not playing good in your real matches, it's because as you add pressure, you don't have that kind of relaxed sense that you can just hit those shots like, oh, no big deal, because if it doesn't count. In this video, I'm gonna to show you the drills you should be using for your forehand to make sure you own those shots. Like I said, we're going to show you drills you can do with the ball machine that will help you master and take your forehand to the next level. So let's get started. My very first drill I want to do is just focus on a basic forehand cross court drill. This may seem simple at first, but guess what? This is the bedrock of your game. Meaning if you can't consistently hit forehands cross court, you are in trouble on your forehand side. The way we're going to do this is just have the ball machine feed me balls cross court. And I'm going to return those back cross court. I'm going to start with a really simple progression. The first part of the progression is this. I'm not going to move. I'm just going to groove my stroke and get it going cross court. That's how you start. Next, I'm going to add in movement by making sure that I hit and recover back to the correct recovery spot. Just know you're not going to recover all the way back to the middle. We're going to recover two to three feet off the center on our forehand side. We're going to kind of mirror where we're hitting the ball. Now this is super important because if you don't recover to the right spot, you're going to actually have to run more in your forehand, which is going to also add to breaking your forehand down. This is the second level, just making sure we hit and recover, hit and recover. The third and final level is where we start adding in some accountability. This is key. Accountability is what allows you to play better in your matches instead of just in your practices. Because here's the difference. When you're playing a practice match, yeah, you're having fun, you're giggling or whatever, but Sometimes when we play practice matches and we miss it, we're like, oh, this is practice, no big deal. Or when we're doing a practice and we miss it, our coach is like, oh, do another one. I do that too. But when you really want to start stepping up your game and start playing better in matches, what you need to do is hold yourself accountable. And a great way of holding yourself accountable is seeing how many balls you can hit cross court. Not in the doubles alley, but cross court. I will try to hit six balls consistently in the cross court area. After I do this, I'll probably do three to four sets of this. So I'll do six balls, take a break, and do another six balls, take a break, do another six balls, and take a break. This starts to work on my accountability, meaning that I know I have to hit six balls in a row before I can move on to the next set. Now this is the very first drill, and you'll see the same progression between starting off hitting it, adding some movement, and adding accountability to all three drills. The next shot we're going to work on is the forehand inside out. This is hugely important. This is probably one of the most popular shots in men's and women's tennis because you can use your forehand to hurt your opponent. The reason I like the forehand inside out is because it's like an upgrade. If you don't like your backhand or maybe your backhand's not as big as your forehand, you can upgrade it by running around and hitting your inside out forehand to your generally your opponent's backhand if they're right handed. And this is such a key thing. If you watch any, any match, you constantly see players running over to the backhand side and hitting forehands out of that wing. The reason being is because A, it makes their backhand smaller. So it makes their opponent have to hit a more difficult shot if they want to get to their backhand. And in general, when we have to run to our forehand side, we have more reach. So we're able to deal with a lot of balls in different strike zones. Not only this, by having more reach, we're making our opponent take more uh, risk because they have to come down the line to get to the forehand. They have to take a lot of risk to get to my backhand because I'm making that court smaller. They have to take more risk by going down the line. And if they don't hit a good shot, I can roast another forehand cross court and hurt them and keep them on the run. Again, for this drill, we wanna sit in the backhand corner and hit inside out forehands. Now, I like to target not so close to the sidelines. So many times when we do drills like this, we're, we're trying to hit the ball two or three feet inside the, the single sideline. We don't want to do that. Give yourself tons of margin. And we're going to go again by then adding movement, working on the footwork that you're going to use to run around and hit your inside out forehand. 
Now, for footwork, the very first thing you want to think about is a drop step, how we're going to drop that back foot and get around. And then we're going to try to push our weight through the court in the direction we're hitting the wall. So a couple little tips there. Now, finally, what we're going to do is, again, add some accountability. Can you hit six balls inside out and then do another set and another set? The more you do these sets and the more countable and the quicker you do them, guess what? Also, the more confidence you're gonna have when you're hitting these shots in the match. Just think about it. Do you worry about tying your shoe? No, because you've done it a thousand, probably a billion times by now, but you've tied your shoe so many times that you never think about it. So that's why you're so confident. If someone says, tie your shoe, and if they magically had a gun to your head, you'd be like, oh, no big deal. I'll tie my shoe, even under pressure, because you've done it so many times. The third shot that you want to start working on your forehand is the forehand inside in. This is kind of the one-two combo that you see a lot of players use. Now, here's a couple cautions when you're working on your forehand inside in. You want to make sure you're hitting your forehand inside in from slightly closer to the middle of the court. You don't want to hit the forehand inside in from almost closer to the single sideline, even though you see players doing it. They're taking a lot of risk when they're closer to the single sideline because you gotta notice that as you get closer to the single sideline, you have less and less court to hit into, which means you're taking more risk and we don't wanna do that. The ideal situation is when the ball's slightly in the middle that you can now hit it inside in, running your opponent and keeping them in a position where they have to run and hit a shot, which is more difficult. So I suggest setting the ball machine up almost where you hit the inside in, but a little bit closer over to the middle, and then work on your inside in shot. Now, when we're hitting this, a lot of times the inside in necessarily isn't a winner. It's just to really hurt your opponent unless you get a really short inside in ball that's a lot higher. So what I suggest doing is making sure that you're not necessarily going for a huge ball, but add some spin. Because you can see how this can turn into a great combination that I love to use when I'm playing matches, meaning that I'll start a forehand cross courts. When I get an opportunity, I'll go inside out. I'll hit big heavy inside out forehands until I get a ball in the middle and then I run them to their forehand side. After this I might come the net or I might look to take another ball and run them again inside out and then come in. The real key is that I'm controlling the point using my forehand and not giving my opponent a lot of options to hit balls when they get a chance to be set up. I'm constantly keeping them on the run. So this is important to know how to hit it inside in and be able to do it consistently. So you can see how all these shots can not only work together, but in isolation, they're really important too. The next series of shots we're gonna work on is a forehand down the line. Now, the key to hitting the forehand down the line isn't so much like hitting a great forehand down the line, is noticing when you should be hitting the forehand down the line. What this means is, generally, you don't wanna be running off the court towards the single sideline if you're hitting a forehand down the line. You wanna be doing it generally when you're moving forward and you have your weight behind the ball. Not only that, we wanna look for a ball that is slightly shorter in the court so we can take time away from your opponent by moving up to the ball. And that's one more key. If you really wanna take all of these drills to the next level, it's all about time. Now, you can do these drills in the beginning depending on your level and kind of letting the ball bounce and come up and then maybe go down a little bit and then hit it. The ideal situation, which you see the pros, is they bounce and the ball comes up and they hit at the top of the bounce. And even some pros, what you'll see is they'll hit it on the way up. By doing this, you take even more time. It makes your shot even more effective. I think of it as like adding nitrous to your engine of your car. It's gonna turbo boost whatever you do because by taking away time with your opponent means they get less time to set up, meaning they're gonna also probably have less time to swing, meaning that they're gonna probably make a mistake or at least hit you a ball that's easier for you to attack and keep them on the run. So what we wanna do is set up the ball machine where it gives you a slightly shorter ball on the forehand side, and we're working on moving, seeing the ball being short as it's coming over, moving up and attacking it. Not attacking it super hard, but attacking it because you're taking it early. We wanna let the ball come up, hopefully above the net if it's gonna bounce that high, and then attack it. One more word of warning when you're thinking of going down the line. Actually, I hate even saying the word down the line or the phrase down the line because it draws our mind to hitting the ball closer to the line. I don't actually want to hit the ball closer to the single sideline. I want to still have three to four feet away from the single sideline. Now, when you're generally hitting the shot, also you want to think to move forward after this. The next shot you want to work on with your forehand is what I call the opener, the can opener, which is the angle. The forehand angle is so important. This is a great combo, like if I'm hitting forehand cross courts and my opponent leaves the ball a little short or doesn't have quite enough on it, I can take my forehand and create more spin and pull the ball off the court. What this does, it makes the court wider for my opponent. And the goal is to get the ball to pass the single sideline before it goes past the baseline. If I can do that, and not without trying to go extreme, like super short, but if I can just do this a little bit, I suddenly make my opponent have to stretch further 
off the single sideline, meaning that they're going to have to run over to the double sideline to hit the forehand. Now from there, guess what? I have a ton of options. If they go back cross court and it's slightly short, I can go down the line. If, maybe it's not short, they go back cross court as they're recovering, I can move up, take it early and go back behind them with either another angle if it's short or cross court, maybe wrong footing them, maybe giving me another ball that they hit in the middle that I can run around and hit that inside out forehand. And if they hit that inside out forehand that I hit back in the middle, I hit another inside in. You can see how they're all working together now. And this is so important. If you have confidence with your forehand hitting each one of these shots, you can start doing different patterns. I know my personal patterns with my forehand side, and it makes me so much more powerful on the court because I don't spend so much time thinking more than I do reacting to going, ooh, this is, I know what to do here, let's do this. The moment I have to think a little too much, guess what? You start making mistakes because there's not a lot of time between when you hit the ball and the ball comes back. You see coaches at tournaments feeding their players balls to give them reps because reps keep them confident about the shot they're gonna hit. And that's the only way you can really go in and really step it up. Be confident about the shots you're hitting, knowing that you hit enough reps that you can do this anytime you need to. And the final shot that I suggest you working on is this. It's a forehand defensive shot. What this means is when your opponent, let's say, hits an angle or pulls you off the court, instead of smacking that ball back, we should lift the ball up higher, buying us more time. Just like I said before, if your opponent decides to hit the ball cross court without lifting it, you can go behind them or take advantage of them. We don't want that when we're off the court because it's gonna happen. So we wanna lift the ball up and gain more height over the net, which gives us more time to get into the court. We can do all this by training the right way, which is making sure we can hit the shot first, then we add movement and then accountability. Now, if you have technical issues with your forehand, go watch this, the perfect forehand, because it'll show you how to hit your forehand and have all the basic fundamentals to hit a great forehand so you can do all these drills to the best of your ability and the best of your level.